March here. I'm doing an update on Project Frankenruger. This is the Ruger single action revolver that's getting converted to 9mm and getting magazine feeding added on. This is ZeroCraft in one corner of the machine shop. You can see our 1951 Logan lathe and a Lobo Machinery Bridgeport style mill, lathe mill, uh, sorry, uh, drill mill. Um, Piece and piece of equipment. We could use a better vise right now. It's a little slippery, but works well enough. ZeroCraft is a communal geek space hacker space in Tucson, Arizona that I'm renting some time in. Um, welding bays are back here. I won't go into details. The tool shed, lockable, of course. Computer room and such in there. And woodworking supplies we drag out halfway into the parking lot when it's time to do some serious woodworking. Um, what I'm here to show you is an update on the first actual gun part I've been able to make. Um, what you see here in my hand is my six and a half inch Douglas barrel inside of an outer sheath tube made out of a piece of motorcycle handlebars Nice, chrome, shiny, smooth, works great, good metal. Um, that threaded area here is the end of the Douglas barrel that I've threaded, 9 16 18, national fine. And that thing on the end there is my gas trap. Now let me try and show you how it works with one hand. Uh, it screws off. Let's see, I should be able to unscrew it. Good, yeah, here we go. What this does is it screws onto the end of the barrel and it acts as a gas trap. It, that hole right there is perfectly sized for a 9mm bullet with just a little bit of free play in each direction. Everything is perfectly centered, perfectly aligned on the barrel. The barrel currently is still 6.5 inches. These threads were cut as a test because this thing's getting shortened to 3.5 inches. With the, tap on, with the trap on there, it'll be more like 4 inches altogether. That hole there is a set screw that's going to hold the gas trap onto, um, onto the barrel. I'm not 100% sure I'm using it, but I think I will. Uh, it's going to be painted and otherwise decorated by the t in the final version, but this is fully functional and perfectly centered, and everything is absolutely mechanically dead on. Now let me show you one more thing that's going to be done to it. Uh, I'm going to have to switch hands here real quick. Okay, good. Once I've got everything assembled, there's going to be an additional hole drilled at one of these corners. I don't know which one. It depends on how it goes together. And this copper gas line will go in there, and that's what will trap the gas and direct it backwards and eject empty shells via the tapped gas. So that's going to go approximately where the original ejector rod went on the stock gun. Um, we're not going to need an ejector rod anymore because we're going to spit out empty shells with gas pressure instead of with um, mechanical effort one by one. So um, I already know from testing similar stuff in 357 Magnum that I've got way more than enough strength here to hold as a 9 mil. There's just no question. And this should be a very efficient trap because as I lathe spun the business end, the metal, I don't know if you can see it, this video, but it folded in, which is perfect. Now, let me gar grab one other thing to show you. Okay. In my hand here, I have an exactly 9 millimeter drill bit. Um... And it goes in with just a little free play, and I've checked it's absolutely perfect. Dead center, not only in the trap, but lined up with the barrel as well. So the bullet should fly perfectly out of there. And because there's a cup effect back, backwards into the hole, the gas should be extremely efficiently trapped. Um... For, to use for mechanical ejection purposes. I'm really happy with how this came out. Um, so that's, basically, I'm relearning how to use lathe and mill 
after 30 plus year absence. Okay, I was a very advanced student, uh, high school metal shop. Uh, I used to, my dad had some tools in the house, uh, in his garage, not as good as this, but I'm rusty, uh, rustier than I thought I was. Um, so I've had to sit and relearn how to do these things, and I'm very pleased with the first actual part made that doesn't involve modifying, for example, the $270 uh, Bowen cylinder blank. Holy crap. Yeah, I don't want to screw that up. So, um, yeah, i got to basically know exactly what I'm doing before I'm messing with that beast. Uh, but this is a preliminary step. I'm going to be shortening this barrel from six and a half inches to, I've decided on three and a half of actual working barrel, and then the gas tap will stick out about another three quarters of an inch once it's threaded on there properly. Uh, half an inch to three quarters, somewhere in there. The reason I'm going only three and a half inch short is I've looked at some of the performance data for nine mil ammo coming out of a two inch barrel. Smith & Wesson snub-nosed 9mm revolver. And apparently what happens is, because your cylinder is longer... Oh, that's another thing. I'm not going with the short cylinder game plan. I'm going to have to run a long cylinder. So that means the, the bullet's going to travel through a fairly long space of .3555. That's the reamer size I bought to finish out the throat. It's going to have a really long throat. So the bullet's going to be accelerating down that long throat long before it gets to the threaded barrel area. That means it's going to jump from forcing cone to, to actual th rifled barrel um, at a very high rate of speed. And the, the performance numbers that Smith & Wesson was getting is they were doing exactly the same thing. Performance numbers they were getting out of a 2-inch barrel revolver was 9mm bullets moving as fast as if they came out of a 4-inch barrel Glock. So with a 3.5-inch barrel and my long cylinder, I'm going to be pushing velocities very close to a 5.5-inch, possibly even a 6-inch Glock. So that's, that should be fast enough. So this thing is going to be short and relatively brutal for a 9mm by the time I'm done. So, yeah, that's all for now, and um, I, this, this lathe, dated 1951, learning how to use it properly, how to center things up on a four-jaw chuck with four independent jaws, um, how to test centering at two different axes, two different points on a shaft instead of just one, so you get the entire shaft running full-length concentric. Uh, yeah, relearning all those things uh, has taken me some time, plus I had to take a, uh, a little bit of time out for a particular political action. Uh, had a small medical problem. Fortunately, that's all fixed. Uh, but anyways, I'm back on it, and I've got the first actual working gun part for this project. And uh, the gun's still not taken apart. The, the goal is to finish out all the small bits before... I take the uh, the gun apart and start mounting things up. So I get everything ready, and then hopefully in one marathon 12 to 24 hour session, I'm going to strip my gun down as a 357 millimeter, well, 357 magnum millimeter. Holy crap! Now I'll bring it down as a 357 magnum and bring it back up as a 9 millimeter parabellum, all in one shot. That's the goal. Anyways, uh, signing out for now, Jim March.